And I looked, John the Revelator speaking, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having the Father's name, where? Written in their foreheads. I want you to circle in. Now, if you're looking at the screen, you can't circle, so you need to open your Bibles. Circle the word in. And note in your mind that it's not the word on. Verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they which I saw, John says, they sung as it were a new song before the throne. And before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. The Bible here describes a group not only as the one hundred and forty and four thousand, and the first distinctive mark of the group is that they have Jesus Father's name in their foreheads. Many of us, many of us, when we think of the seal or the mark, we think of the Sabbath. Amen? Amen. But the Sabbath is not the seal. The Bible tells us the mark was in their foreheads or in their minds. The reason why I emphasize that is because many of us are here, but our mind is not. It has more to do with the reconditioning of the mind than it has to do with the day. Now, I don't want you to misconstrue what I'm saying now, so please pay attention. In your Bibles, turn with me to Joshua chapter 5, verse 15. I want to let you know that just because you had worship at sunset last night and you put on your best suit and you came to church this morning, I am here to tell you that it guarantees you nothing. I want to show it to you plain from the word of God. Joshua chapter 5, verse 15. The Bible says, And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereupon thou standest is holy. Now I want you to understand why I chose this Bible verse, because I want you to understand what it is to have a true meaning of Sabbath keeping and who it is these 144,000 are. The Sabbath, it is just Saturday if God is not in it. I'm going to say it one more time. The Sabbath is just Saturday if God is not in it. If you should walk out these walls and ask somebody what day is it, they will never tell you that it's the Sabbath. They will tell you that it's Saturday. But to those who are in here, to us who know something different, it is the Sabbath. Amen. He chose, God chose, the seventh day. And he came down into it, making it holy, and he commands us to what? To remember, to remember to not do anything that will besmirch its holiness. Because if you do, Sabbath will still be the Sabbath, but his holiness will move from where you are, making you a section a worshiper, not a Sabbath worshiper. There is a difference. And stick a pin right here. God told us to remember. Now, 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 when you remember, where do you remember? In your mind. At what point in time should you remember? Every day. God is saying to you, not only remember that it's the Sabbath, 
on Friday evening, but remember the Sabbath on Monday. Remember the Sabbath on Tuesday. Remember the Sabbath on Wednesday and Thursday. So when the Sabbath comes, you are already in a Sabbath frame of mind. Amen. That is why we hear statements like, we should guard jealously the edges of the Sabbath. Remember that every moment is consecrated holy time. We hear words like, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God is not trying to have you do anything. God is trying to recondition your mind. That is why in Deuteronomy chapter 6, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, God commanded this of Israel. The Bible says, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in your hands. Where shall it be? In your heart, in your mind. And thou shalt wear them. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them as a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. The Bible says there is a famine coming, not a famine of bread and water, but for the word of God. God's law is called truth. And he said with his very lips in John chapter 16, 13 through 14, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Now, now, I want you to understand where I am. Now, we're still talking about the mark. We haven't even started talking about the people yet. Because the Bible says these people had a distinct mark. We're talking about the mark. We want to understand what it is because the mark isn't the Sabbath. And I'm sorry to burst your bubble. We want to understand truly what this mark is. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will do what? He will guide you into all truth. So right now we understand that if we want to know truth, we cannot comprehend or apprehend truth without God's spirit. There is nothing that we can do in our daily lives. And God said in a few verses before, it is expedient that I go for the spirit to come, which simply means that the spirit is going to do something that Jesus cannot do. He will teach you and he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Not only will he speak, but he will show you things to come. It means that those difficult truth that we have in the Bible, we need not go to anyone. The Holy Spirit will open up those things so we can know ahead of time what will happen. That's a promise. But Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 tells us something. If God is willing to give us the spirit of truth who is to guide us into all truth and we understand that his commandments are truth, that his word is truth, what does Ephesians 4 verse 30 tells us? The Bible says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God or the spirit of truth, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Grieve not the spirit because he is the one who quickens your faculties. He is the one who will guide you uh, into harmony with God. Grieve him not because he takes your vacillating character and makes it strong and steadfast. Do not grieve the spirit because he is the one who searches the deep things of God. But the ultimate reason is found in Ephesians chapter 1.13. 
we should not grieve him because he's the conduit by which we receive the mark. Ephesians 1.13 tells us, in whom he also trusted, speaking of the Spirit, that after you heard the word of truth, and here means to hear a sermon, hear a Bible text, and to comprehend in your mind, the Bible says after you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that ye believed, ye were sealed with, with the spirit of promise. This spirit of promise is the promise.